Okay, so this video is going to explain how to assemble this Pioneer PL200 turntable and how to set it up. When the turntable arrives, the platter would have been removed and packaged separately and I just want to demonstrate how to lift the platter and how to handle it. And that's done by inserting the fingers into these two holes. And so, then you can just drop the platter over the spindle, like that, and then place the mat. Okay, so the next thing you do is take the counterbalance and position it with the numbers facing forward and then just slide it onto the back of the arm and then just gently twist it moving it forward and just ensure that this cueing lever is in the up position that helps to protect the stylus so we're going to start with the anti-skating dial set to zero so you can turn it that's maximum that's three two one so start with it set to zero and then come around here and undo this little tie wrap okay just undo that okay this is a little clip that holds the arm in place and it works when uh, when the turntable is steady but this tie wrap was used for transportation purposes now you'll see that when I release the arm clamp that the arm actually floats upward so what we'll do is we'll just keep advancing this weight forward until the arm starts to droop Okay, so now the arm is kind of hanging in space there. Okay, so now without the turntable plugged into mains, I'm going to move this arm slightly across. And note that the queuing lever is still up. Okay, moving it slightly across and you will know that the turntable is on if at this point the platter starts spinning and that this light um, comes on it mustn't be on, it must be unplugged Okay. so I'll just move that slightly across there ok so now you can see the, uh, the stylus over there just underneath there that I'm pointing at and just note the height of the stylus above this uh, the rubber mat so I'm going to lower this arm okay you see that it falls now and what we want to do is we want to adjust the counterbalance until that the stylus is just at the level of this uh, rubber platter and at this at this stage I think I'm fairly close to the zero balance so it's going to be a very fine adjustment you might even want to make this your zero balance but it's okay I'm just going to try it a little bit bring it slightly forward and then it's going to go down just a little bit tiny bit back it's going to come back up again and where are we? we're just slightly below that level okay so I think now we would attain the zero balance I'm going to lift there we go 
going to lift the cubing lever up again. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do next is just rotate the dial. Oops, I can I can just put a clamp on. I'm going to rotate the dial until it is on zero. And let me just zoom in there. Here's my pointer. So there's the line. And we see that we've got zero. Okay, now just notice that when I rotated this dial, well, when I first adjusted the weight, I, I turned on this black portion here. That's a grippy part. Okay, um, and then when I changed the dial, I turned on this. Now, once you set this up for zero, um, you, you don't change it again. So you've kind of calibrated it by doing that. Okay, so far so good. The next thing I'm going to do is set the weight of the arm and I'm going to use the dial at the back to do that. I'm going to set it to just under 2 grams. Okay, so now that I've got the dial set up for zero, I'm going to adjust from the back. I'm not going to I'm not going to readjust the position of the dial relative to the scrappy part here. I'm just going to turn it. And somewhere between 1.5 and 2.0 is the correct weight for this cartridge and I'm going to set it roughly just under two. Okay, the next thing to do is to go to the anti skate and set it also to the same amount or the same number. I'm going to just set it to two. Okay, so the anti skate number must correspond with the number on the dial there. Just zoom out a bit. Oh, I've got him. Okay. So the anti skate here is set up for about two, and that corresponds to the, my setting that is just slightly under two over there. So just just to go back again, if I if I now adjust this thing back to naught, okay, what that means is that my arm is going to be hovering again, um, just at the same height. My stylus will be just at the same height as the top of this mat. Okay, and then what I did was I adjusted the dial so that it's correct for that. I calibrated it and then now I'm dialing in the appropriate oops, the appropriate uh, mass for the arm, which is just under two. Okay, and then I set up my anti skate over there. Now, just a note that the stylus is a very, very fragile thing, okay? So, you want to avoid at all costs any damage to it, because it's quite expensive. Right. There it is. And so, um, you often see people using the lifter on the arm. I'm just going to show you that. 
they use this lifter to put it on the record. You see them do this. Okay, so don't do that. What you do is use your cueing lever. Okay, lift. Ensure, do you see the cueing lever lowers and, and lifts the arm? Okay, lift it. Then you can push your arm across and if there's a record on, you can then lower the cueing lever and see how gently it drops the arm. Okay, I didn't put it on a record, which is not, it's not recommended, but um, the turntable wasn't on and that's why I was able to do that. So no damage came as a result of doing that. But I don't recommend the person who's not familiar with record players to do that. Okay, and then that concludes the setup of the turntable.